Hello everybody, Sparkster1701 here, and today by popular demand on some of my other videos, we're going to start a three-part series covering the brand new Transformers card game. I'm going to do this in three different videos. Video one, right now we are going to cover all of the Transformer cards, or at least these three groups in particular, the cards from the starter set, the two exclusives from the packs available at San Diego Comic Con and Gen Con, and lastly the 40 cards that you can pull from the booster sets. In the second video we will cover the different battle cards that you would use to build your deck, and the third and final video will cover the recently released Metroplex box set. So that's where we'll cover Metroplex, all three of his drone cards, and the three exclusive battle cards that he comes with. Alright, before we get started, I do need to put a few shout-outs out there to some fellow friends of mine that did help me get this all set up for this video. For starters, I want to give a special shout out to my brother for loaning me a few of the cards here so that I could complete this video. Do recommend you visit his YouTube channel at Cyclonus150 to get a view of some conventions that we both attend. You might even see a glimpse of me in there somewhere. And I also have a set of 15 friends that I want to give a special shout out to who gave me these two exclusives from Comic-Con as part of my Christmas. So thank you ladies for this contribution. That helped make this video possible. Alright, let's start, of course, by taking a look at the four cards from the starter deck. From our starter deck, we get Bumblebee Brave Warrior, Ironhide Veteran Autobot, Optimus Prime Autobot Leader, and Red Alert Security Chief. Let's look at them one by one. We'll go in numerical order for them, so we'll start with Bumblebee Brave Warrior. Of course, this is his bot mode. It gives his special abilities listed as, le his traits rather, are listed as leader and melee. He has nine hit points on both sides. In robot mode, he has four attack and two defense. In alt mode, he will have three attack and two defense. And, of course, before I forget about it, he also costs six stars to be deployed on your team. When he's in bot mode, he gains tough one, which allows you to flip one more battle card when defending. So, that's always good to have. Tough one is one of the better abilities to have. Or at least tough. Sometimes some of the other guys do have a higher tough stat. But, it's still nice. Any little boost in defense helps. And of course, in his alt mode, he still has the trait of leader and melee, but he gains car. Since, obviously, he's a car. Somewhat loosely, kind of almost looks like a hybrid between the Beetle and the Camaro. But at any rate, in his alt mode... He has a different special ability, that when you flip to this mode, which basically means once you transform from robot to alt mode, each of your characters gets Pierce 1 until the end of the turn. And Pierce is another decent ability, as it explains here. Do at least one damage when attacking, but not more than the attack total. Pierce numbers add together. So if you could grant Bumblebee some ec a couple of extra pierces, he could at least always do three damage, even if an attack fails. That's basically how Pierce works as it stacks. 
you can keep stacking it, but you can't get any more than what his attack is, unless you're boosting his attack. Next, we move on to Ironhide. Ironhide's only trait is that he's listed as ranged in robot mode. When he's in truck mode, when he's in alt mode, he goes to Troy Gaines truck, but ranged is replaced with melee. He has seven hit points all around. In robot mode, he has four attack and two defense. In alt mode, he has three attack and three defense. And he costs six stars to play. But, the only major downside is that Ironhide has no special abilities in either mode. Now, while sometimes that's a blessing, because it does allow you to customize the guy a little bit more... It's also a bit of a curse, because that means he's not really contributing anything to the battle itself. So, characters like this, you kind of got to be careful with. They are a bit of a double-edged sword, since while they do, you can, you've got the freedom to do what you wish to help improve things on them, the fact that they don't bring anything does tend to hurt it a little bit. Now, of course, on the plus side, Ironhide here does have an exclusive weapon card in the battle cards, and we'll cover that in the next video. So, that at least gives him something, but in the lore, Ironhide was a considerably tough Transformer, so I'm surprised he didn't at least bring tough onto him. The next card in the starter is Optimus Prime. Optimus comes with the traits of leader and ranged. Of course, on the reverse in his alt mode, he has still has leader and ranged and gains truck, obviously. He has 10 hit points overall. In robot mode, he has 3 attack and 2 defense. And also retains that in alt mode. And of course, before we forget about it, he costs 7 stars to deploy in your team. In robot mode, Optimus Prime has bold 1 which gives him an extra battle card when attacking. Basically the opposite of tough. So that's, that's also good. Extra card when attacking can sometimes help. Then of course, on the truck side, when you flip into this mode, as in going from robot to truck mode, you get to draw a card. So, nothing outstanding, but that can always come in handy. So, don't discount that when playing a game like this. And lastly, for the starter deck, we get to Red Alert. In robot mode, he has the trait of Ranged, which he retains in his alt mode, but also gains Car. Red Alert has 10 hit points. In overall, in robot mode, he has 5 attack and 0 defense. Whereas in car mode, he has 3 attack and 2 defense. And he costs 6 stars to put on your team. But like Ironhide, he has nothing in terms of his special abilities. Now, it kind of hurts worse for Red Alert because Red Alert doesn't have any exclusive cards in the game, so he's truly one you can really go all custom with, but 
Would have been nice if he would have at least brought something. I'm not exactly sure what Red Alert could contribute to the game easily. But just I, in my opinion, I think it would have been better if he had at least brought something along. But that's just my two cents. All right, let's take a look at the rarest of the cards for the game, the ones that were given out at Comic-Con and Gen Con this year. And again, we're going in numerical order as listed on the bottom. So we will start with Cliff Jumper, Renegade Warrior. His traits in robot mode is ranged. In alt mode, he has car and melee. Cliff Jumper has 12 hit points all around. In robot mode, he has 5 attack and 2 defense, which is also carried over in his car mode. And Cliff Jumper is uh, costs 8 stars to deploy on your team. Now, of course, Cliff Jumper here has an interesting ability in his robot mode. He gains plus one to his attack for each car that's in your knocked out area. So, obviously, if you're going to want to take advantage of an ability like this, Cliff Jumper should be on a team that has nothing but cars in it. So, every time one of them gets knocked out of the game, he gets stronger. Hopefully that becomes worth it. Now on the reverse side, when you flip one of your other cars to robot mode, you get to draw a card. So again, Cliff Jumper does provide a lot for a team of nothing but cars. So if you do manage to have a Cliff Jumper card, do consider that when you're building your team that he should really be on a team of cars and nothing else. So that he gains the most benefit for you and himself in the game. And now we'll take a look here at the Decepticon in the pack. We have Slipstream, Strategic Seeker. She has ranged here in her bot mode as her trait, which she retains in her alt mode, but gains plane as a trait. Slipstream has 13 hit points overall. In robot mode, she has 3 attack and 1 defense. Whereas in alt mode, she still has 3 attack, but gains up to two defense. And like Cliff Jumper, she costs eight stars to deploy on your team. In robot mode, her special ability is one that's kind of funky here. When this attacks and you flip at least three different battle icons, this gets plus three attack until the end of the turn. Now, the battle icons on the battle cards, let me grab some of them real quick here. <laughs> Thankfully, I kept the binder nearby. The battle color icons are these little colored squares here in the corner. So, if you manage to get all three, an orange, a blue, and a white of those cards at one time, then she would gain plus three until the end of the turn. So that requires a little bit of luck to be able to use this ability. So not exactly one of the better ones to have in my mind, unless you're a pretty lucky person. Now this one here on the opposite side is a better one. When one of your planes attacks, move one damage counter from it to the defender. So, 
That's kind of a nasty little surprise. So I would almost suggest, if I was going to use her, I would say put her on a team of nothing but planes and keep her in this mode. So that way you can keep moving damage counters back and forth onto your enemies. Sneaky, isn't it? All in all, the two exclusive cards, they aren't bad. They're not super outstanding, but they certainly are nice additions to the game. Okay, viewers, time for the long-winded part. Right here we have all 40 of the Transformer cards that you will pull from assorted booster packs. So while we go through all of them, I'll also make sure to tell you their rarity as an added feature, so you kind of know how difficult some of them are to get. But at any rate, let's get started. Again, we're going in numerical order. Card number one is RC, Skilled Fighter. Yeah, no, I know I was expecting the pink car myself, but... Oh, well, this isn't bad. RC is a rare card. In robot mode, her trait is Specialist, which she retains in her alt mode, which also she gains motorcycle so obviously they're borrowing from the Michael Bay movies instead of the G1 line which yeah it's okay we'll leave that up for debate for later RC has nine hit points all together in her robot mode she has one attack and one defense however in her alt mode she still has one defense but boosts her attack to two and she costs five stars to deploy on your team. Now in robot mode, she gains, she has pierce equal to her attack. So she can do at least that much damage when attacking, but not more. So if you want to boost her pierce abilities, definitely grant her some weapon cards to boost her attack. And lay waste to your enemies. So that's a nice ability for her. And it gets even better on her alternate mode. When you flip to this mode, as in going from this to this, repair one damage from each of your characters. So you've definitely got not only the skilled fighter in the robot mode, but in the alt mode, she becomes a healer. So, quite useful. Quite a useful character, and at only five stars, she can fit into most teams pretty easily. So, definitely one that's worth seeking out. Card number two is Autobot Cosmos, Recon and Communication. Cosmos is rare as well. In robot mode, he simply has specialist as his trait. He retains it in his alternate mode, but gains spaceship. Or for those of you that are fans of the Lego movie, spaceship, spaceship, spaceship. Overall, Cosmos has 21 hit points, so that gives him some of the high, one of the highest amounts of hit points available. He has two attack and one defense. In alternate mode, he has one attack and one defense. Now in his bot mode, he has a pretty special ability here. When you reshuffle your deck while this is attacking, knock out the defender if it has 12 stars or fewer. So, he's one you're going to need to have your deck built around, but you're also going to need some good timing to go with that, since it has to happen while he is attacking. 
So, you can instantly get rid of just about every Transformer. This, of course, will not work on Metroplex. And I believe there's one other character that it will not instantly knock out. So, that may change in future decks, so be aware of that. And remember, you're, if you're going to use Cosmos, you need to build your team up and your deck to take full advantage of this. Now, on his UFO side, when you flip to this mode, again, as in going from this to this, Scrap all the cards from your hand, then draw that many cards. So that's another thing that works well with this ability. Since he only gets it when you reshuffle your deck. So you need to move your cards out of your hand as fast as possible. So having this will definitely help that. But you also got to remember... He can only get instantly KO an opponent if he's attacking when you reshuffle the deck. So that requires a little strategic planning. Cosmos may be a little too much for beginning players. But I'm sure a fair amount of advanced players will find a lot of use for him. Card number three is Autobot Hound. As many of you will remember, this was the card I brought back from Gen Con from doing the demo. Autobot Hound, Long Range Scout. Unfortunately, he's only a common card. I should have known better than to expect to get a rare out of that. For traits, Autobot Hound has melee in robot mode. He retains in his alternate mode, and he also gains truck. I guess it's a better way instead of going jeep. But anywho, overall, Hound has 12 hit points. He has 4 attack and 2 defense. In alt mode, he still has 4 attack, but only has 1 defense. And he costs 8 stars to deploy in your team. <laughs> now again, some of his, uh, his special abilities do require a little bit of luck. When this attacks or defends and you flip your first white icon this turn, he gains plus 1 attack and 1 defense until the end of the turn. So that's kind of nice. It might, it'll mean that if you're going to put Hound on your team, you might want to make sure your deck has a few extra with these white icon cards in the hopes that you can get it to land right. On the alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, again, this sounds like a broken record, but just to make sure we're clear, going from this to this, you may scrap a card from your hand that has at least one white icon. If you do, draw two cards. So again, that may come in handy if it's something you need to get rid of or something you can't use anymore. But of course, also, if you happen to need two cards. So, Hound's kind of a mixed bag, but I could see him being a decently used card. Guard number four is Autobot Jazz Special Ops. Jazz is an uncommon card. His traits include Leader and Melee in Robot Mode, both of which he retains in his Alt Mode and gains Car. Jazz overall has ten hit points. He has 3 attack in robot mode and 0 defense, which he also retains in his alt mode. So that's going to hurt Jazz a lot, that 0 defense. 
Oh, also, Jazz has, it costs six stars to deploy on your team. But, like Hound, he's also dependent on drawing white icon cards. In his robot mode, his special ability goes, when this attacks and you flip at least two white icons, this gets pierced two until after the attack. So he'll always at least be able to land two damage, unless he's equipped with something that gives him a higher pierce to go with it. Now on this one, on his alternate mode, gets a little different. When this defends against an enemy that doesn't have pierce, and you flip at least two white icons, this can't take more than two damage from this attack. So, interesting ability, but it's going to require you to stack the deck a little bit with more of these uh, more battle cards with white icons on them in order to take full advantage of Jazz. So, again, he may not be the best for beginner players to use, but... He's not quite as complicated as Cosmos is. Next up, card number five is Autobot Mirage, Lone Wolf. Mirage is an uncommon card. He has the trait of ranged in robot mode. However, in his alternate mode, ranged is replaced with melee, and he gains car. Mirage also costs 9 stars to deploy on your team, so he is a bit expensive. Mirage has 12 hit points overall. He has 5 attack and 2 defense in robot mode. In alternate mode, he has 4 attack and 2 defense. And he also has some pretty interesting special abilities here. In robot mode, when you this attacks for the first time each turn, and you flip at least three white stars, you untap this character. Thus meaning that he could possibly, potentially, go again in the game. So, but again... Being able to get three of these white icon battle cards, that can be tricky, so it's not exactly one you want to rely on throughout the game. On his alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, I'm not going to do it anymore, I promise. You may play an action. So, if you happen to have a good action card in your hand... Flip Mirage to his car mode, and you'll be able to play a good action card at that time. Even if you, probably, presumably, even after you've played one. So, somewhat useful, but, again, I think Mirage is probably a little more complicated to play for beginner players. Next up, we finally move to a Decepticon. Here we have Barrage, Merciless Insecticon. He's the sixth card in the game, and he's common. This was the other card that we brought home from Gen Con. This is the one my brother got. Not this particular one, but you get what I'm saying. For special tra for his traits, he has Insecticon and Ranged. So on his alternate mode, he retains Insecticon, but goes to melee instead. And he costs 7 stars to recruit for your team. Barrage has a total of 11 hit points altogether. He has 5 attack and 1 defense in robot mode. In alternate mode, he has 3 attack and 2 defense. For his special abilities, Barrage here on his robot mode, while, while this is attacking a damaged enemy, this has Bold 2. Flip two more battle cards when attacking. 
That's an interesting thing to give to him. Mirage is a nasty character in the lore, so he would definitely go after somebody wounded. Then on the reverse, in his Insecticon mode, when you flip to this mode, one of your characters gets pierced two until the end of the turn. Do at least two damage when attacking, but not more than the attack number total. Pierce numbers add together, so... This will be a nasty thing. He can power up himself or one of his allies until the round is until the turn is over. So Barrage here is pretty useful. He can be a nasty little character. I can imagine he'd be even nastier with a bunch of Insecticons. Card number seven is Bombshell, Insecticon Mind Controller. Bombshell is a common card. His traits are Insecticon and Melee in Robot Mode, and he retains those as well in his Alternate Mode. Bombshell has 10 hit points overall. He has 5 attack and 2 defense in Robot Mode, and has 3 attack and 4 defense in his Insect Mode. And costs 8 stars to put on your team. Unfortunately, like Ironhide and Red Alert, Bombshell doesn't add anything to your team, really. So, again, he's another one of those that's a bit of a disappointment, because I would have liked him to have included... Maybe something for his mind control abilities, but that may come in a future expansion if they can figure out how to make it work. However, the one perk that he does have is this trait of Insecticon. Since the Insecticons do have a fair, they do have a fair amount of cards that do work for just Insecticons, and some of the Insecticons themselves also have abilities that power up and are useful with other Insecticons, so it's kind of, he at least contributes that, but it's kind of hard to say if he's really that much of a team player. But since he's a common card, he'll probably be one of them that many players have until they can get somebody else. Alright, next up, at card number 8, is Bumblebee, Courageous Scout. This is the common Bumblebee in the booster packs. His traits in robot mode are Specialist, which he retains in his alternate mode, and he gains Car. Bumblebee also costs 9 stars to recruit in your team. Bumblebee has 10 hit points altogether. He has 6 attack and 2 defense in robot mode. In alternate mode, he retains the 2 defense but drops his attack to a 5. For special abilities, again, he deals with these white icons. Whenever this attacks or defends and you flip at least 2 white icons, flip 2 more battle cards. So, that can probably help. Or it could backfire on you, so don't rely on it too much. On the alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, draw a card. Then, put a card from your hand on top of your deck. This can help strategically when either you're attacking or defending. If you know exactly what you're about to do, you might be able to slip out a card from your hand and put it back in to the deck so that you can draw it and be able to hopefully utilize the icons on it to help you in your battle. That's the one perk about it at least. Card number nine is also Bumblebee. Legendary Warrior. 
This one is one of the two super rares available in the game. And from my experience buying boosters by the box load, this one is the harder of the two to get. Of course, that may be just in my region, so don't necessarily believe that entirely, but I went through one and a half boxes of boosters, and each one of them I got, the, we got the other one. Nemesis Prime is the other super rare, and we got him more than, we got him all the time. We never pulled this one out of a booster, so in this area here, Nemesis Prime is the easier of the two to get. But at any rate, Bumblebee's traits here are Leader and Melee in Robot Mode, both of which he retains in his Alternate Mode, and he gains Car. This Bumblebee also costs 10 stars to recruit into your team. Bumblebee has 15 hit points. He has 5 attack and 1 defense in Robot Mode. In his alternate mode, he retains the one defense and drops his attack to a four. For special abilities, he's got a pretty powerful one here on his bot mode. When this is your only character on the battlefield, he has plus two attack and plus two defense. So that's always nice to have, but it means you've got to have everybody else on your team knocked out in the process. So... Plan accordingly. On the reverse, in his alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, this character can attack untapped enemies this turn as though they were tapped. So, that gives you an ability to attack somebody that legally you wouldn't be able to go after. And that can be strategically helpful if you're going against some of the super tough opponents in the game. So not a bad ability if you can get it used right. <clears throat> Card number 10 is Chop Shop, Sneaky Insecticon. Chop Shop is an uncommon card. His traits include Insecticon and Melee in Robot Mode, both of which he retains in his Alternate Mode. And Chop Shop costs 6 stars to put on your team. Chop Shop has 9, att 9 hit points, excuse me. He has 4 attack and 1 defense in Robot Mode. In Alternate Mode, he retains the 4 attack but gains it an extra point to his defense, making it two. For special abilities, he's got some unique ones for himself. In robot mode, when he attacks, you may move an upgrade from one of your other characters to this one. Now, while that's an interesting one to be able to put on him, it does come with a catch. If, it's a, if the upgrade states that it's for somebody specific, either a specific robot or somebody with specific traits, then taking the upgrade from them doesn't do any good. So make sure that if you're going to use something like this, make sure your guys have upgrades that Chop Shop can take for himself, or that's a wasted ability. However, on, on the reverse, when you flip to his uh, alternate mode, scrap all the upgrades on this character. For each one scrapped this way, draw a card and repair one damage from one of your Insecticons. So, that's a decent ability as well that makes Chop Shop able to stand in with a team of Insecticons or even just by himself as he has the potential to take heal three damage and give you three cards in the process with this. Or if he's on a team of Insecticons, you can spread the health around. So, Chop Shop here is kind of useful. I'd certainly want him on my team. 
If for nothing else, keep him out of my wallet. Card number 11 is Chromia Special Ops. Chromia is a rare card. She has the traits of Leader and Specialist in Bot Mode. In Alternate Mode, she retains Specialist and gains Motorcycle. So again, we're going with Michael Bay's inspiration that Girl Transformers are Motorcycles. Chromia also costs 8 stars to recruit on your team. She has 11 hit points overall. Her attack is 4 and her defense is 0 in robot mode. In alternate mode, she retains the 4 attack but gains 2 on her defense. For her special abilities, in robot mode... When this attacks and you draw at least two white icons, draw two cards. So, that's a mixed blessing for help. However, on her alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, return a card that has at least one white icon from your scrap pile to your hand. So, if you had a decent upgrade or battle card that has a white icon that you had to throw out, this is a good way to get one get one of those back. So, somewhat useful. Card number 12 is the Decepticon Dark Mount, Cruel Overlord. And he certainly looks it. Dark Mount is a rare card. In his bot mode, he has melee as his trait, which changes to ranged in his alt mode, and he gains tank. Dark mount also costs 9 stars to recruit on your team. He has 9 hit points overall. In robot mode, he has 5 attack and 3 defense. Whereas in alternate mode, he has 4 attack and 4 defense. For his special abilities, in robot mode, while this is defending against a ranged character, i.e. somebody that has ranged up here, he has plus 2 to his defense. So he obviously must have a hidden shield on there or something that he uses against ranged attacks. Either that or he's wielding that axe of his like a lightsaber. In his alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, you may scrap a card from your hand. If you do, do two damage to an enemy. So, that's an interesting one to have Especially if you feel that you have a card you can sacrifice to do two damage with. But of course, seeing as he's the cruel overlord, people playing him may be just as cruel and sacrifice any card just for an easy two damage. The unlucky number 13 is Deadlock, Bounty Hunter. Deadlock is an uncommon card. He has the trait of ranged in robot mode. It changes to melee in his alternate mode, and he gains car. Deadlock also costs 8 stars to deploy on your team. He has 11 hit points overall. In robot mode, he has 5 attack and 1 defense. Whereas on his alternate mode, he has 3 attack and 2 defense. In his robot mode, he has no special abilities whatsoever. So, that's a mixed bag, but unfortunately the exclusive one he has in his alternate mode isn't that much better. When you flip to this mode, choose an enemy. If it is knocked out this turn, draw two cards. So, that's kind of a mixed bag. 
to use, as it's going to rely heavily on a fair amount of luck. I mean, I can imagine more strategic players will be able to utilize it to their benefit, but I don't really see it being that useful overall. So, sorry folks. Card number 14 is Decepticon Shockwave, Cybertron Commander. Shockwave is a rare card. His traits are leader and specialist in robot mode. Both of which he retains in his alternate mode and gains spaceship. And he costs 11 stars to recruit on your team, so he is expensive. Shockwave has 11 hit points altogether. He has 4 attack and 3 defense in robot mode. Whereas in alternate mode, he has 6 attack and 3 damage. In robot mode, his special ability is... When a card is scrapped from your opponent's hand, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does one damage to it. So this can be pretty nasty, especially if you're going up against a person that's using Cosmos or Nemesis Prime that need to flush their decks out as fast as possible. Shockwave is a good counter to those two teams of those guys. Now, on the flip side, when you flip to his alternate mode, each player draws two cards. So, that's kind of a mixed bag to do so, but to double, to add a couple of points to his attack, and yeah, I can probably see it. It would probably help if there were some cards that powered up spaceship characters, but... That's probably coming down the pipeline, folks. Card number 15 is Demolisher, Devoted Decepticon. Demolisher is an uncommon card. He has melee in robot mode for his traits. It becomes ranged in his alternate mode, and he gains tank. Demolisher also has six stars to recruit onto your team. He has seven hit points overall. He has zero attack and four defense in his robot mode. In his alternate mode, he has three attack and three defense. Now, people might criticize the zero attack, but it does go well, it does go along with his special ability here. When this is attacking, flip extra battle cards equal to his defense. Okay, I was wrong. So, definitely power up his defense as best you can in hopes of giving him some way to attack. And do a, hopefully do some damage, because this pitiful zero here begs for some weaponry. However, on the flip side, in his alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, draw a card for each of your other tanks. So, he's going to want to definitely be on a team that has some tanks in it. Like Dark Mount or Megatron. So if you've got both of them, Demolisher would definitely fit in with them. At card number 16, we have Dinobot Sludge, Mighty Stomper. Sludge is an uncommon card. His traits include Dinobot and Specialist in his robot mode, and he retains those in his alternate mode. Sludge also costs 8 stars to recruit on your team. He has 12 hit points overall. He has 5 attack and 2 defense in robot mode. 
Whereas in alternate mode, he has four attack and one defense. Sludge is a Dinobot team player with his abilities. In robot mode, when one of your Dinobots attacks, repair one damage from it. So, Sludge is a Dinobot healer. Then when you flip him over, when you flip to this mode, move any number of damage counters from your other Dinobots to this one. So, Sludge is best with Dinobots only. And will likely be included in many Dinobot themed teams. So keep an eye out for that. Card 17 is Dinobot Slug, Hot-Headed Warrior. Slug is a common card. His special traits are Dinobot and Melee in Robot Mode. He retains them in his Alternate Mode. Slug has 13 attack, has 13 hit points, excuse me, overall. He has 6 attack and zero defense in robot mode, whereas in alt mode he has three attack and three defense. And unfortunately, Slug has no special abilities at all. About the only thing that makes him somewhat useful is the fact that he is a Dinobot. And as you saw, he could work well with Sludge, but Unfortunately, without any other abilities to add to him, there's not much you're going to be able to do with him. Especially at his rather high point cost. Card 18 is Dinobot Snarl, Dia Desert Warrior. Snarl is an uncommon card. His special traits include Dinobot and Melee in both modes. And he costs 7 stars to recruit onto your team. He has 9 hit points overall. He has 5 attack and 2 defense in Robot mode. Whereas he has 4 attack and 2 defense in Alternate mode. When Snarl attacks in his robot mode, you can put a card from your hand on the top of your deck. That way you can set something up for your next attacker or your potential defender. So that can come in handy. However, when you flip to his alternate mode and you have no cards in your hand, you get to draw two cards. Again, that can come in handy but I don't really know by how much, so this one's going to require a little careful playing to gain the best benefits from him. Card number 19 is Dinobot Swoop. Swoop is a common card. His traits are Dinobot and Specialist in Robot Mode, and he retains them in his Alternate Mode. Swoop costs 6 stars to deploy on your team, so he is the least costly Dinobot. He has 10 hit points overall. He has 5 attack and 0 defense in robot mode. Whereas in alternate mode, he has 3 attack and 2 defense. Unfortunately, his robot mode doesn't offer anything to go along with the team, but in his alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, move one damage counter from him onto an enemy. So that can be kind of sneaky to use. So you'll just have to play it out how quickly you can transform Swoop back and forth to do some minor damage to your opponent. Alright, we've reached the halfway point. At card number 20, we have Flame War, Decept Veteran Decepticon. 
she's a common card. We're not going to say anything about the design, folks. Her special ability or special traits include specialist in her robot mode. She retains that in her alternate mode, but gains motorcycle because Michael Bay. She also costs five stars to deploy on your team. Flame War has ten hit points overall. She has three attack and one defense in both robot and alternate modes. She's an interesting character for a good team, as in a robot mode, she gives each character tough one. So that can come in handy to for your defense, as you get an extra card when you're defending. However, when you flip her to her motorcycle mode, each of your characters gets bold one until the end of the turn, meaning they can all flip an extra battle card when attacking. So, not bet, not too bad. And at only five points to deploy, I can see her being used in a fair amount of teams. Now, you knew we weren't done with the Dinobots, folks, because here at number 21, we have Grimlock, Dinobot Leader. Grimlock is rare, as you would probably have figured. His uh, traits include Leader, Dinobot, and Melee, which he has on both modes. And he costs 10 stars to deploy on your team. Grimlock has 12 hit points. He has 6 attack and 2 defense in his robot mode. Whereas in his alternate mode he has 4 attack and 2 defense. In robot mode, when he does more than enough attack damage to knock out an enemy, your opponent chooses one of their other characters and puts <coughs> excuse me, the extra damage onto it. So that, that alone can be nasty. That alone can be nasty, but let's flip him over to the other side. When you flip to this mode, one of your Dinobots gets bold three until the end of the turn. Allowing one Dinobot to flip more, flip three extra battle cards when he's attacking. And yes, as Grimlock is a Dinobot, he can give it to himself. As if Grimlock needs the extra help. But, definitely, nasty character. Oops. Didn't mean to bump that there. Card 22 is Inferno, Fearless Firefighter. Inferno is an uncommon card. He has ranged as his trait in robot mode, which he retains in his alternate mode and gains truck. He also costs a whopping 12 stars to recruit onto your team. Inferno has 11 hit points altogether. He has 8 attack and 3 defense in robot mode, whereas in his alternate mode he has 6 attack and 3 defense. Now again, he doesn't have any abilities as a robot to contribute, but in his alternate mode, when you flip to it, you return all the upgrades on a character to their owner's hand. That can be potentially devastating, but you got to decide if it's worth the point cost, as at 12 stars, Inferno is half your team just with him. So while that's a nice ability, I don't think it's going to get used often due to that high point cost. Coming up at number 23 is Insecticon Scrapnel. Scrapnel is a rare card. 
And he has the traits of Leader, Insecticon, and Melee on both modes. And he costs 7 stars to recruit to your team. Insecticon Scrapnel has 7 hit points altogether. He has 5 attack and 0 defense as a robot. In his alt mode, he has 4 attack and 3 defense. Despite having such low, rather low stats, he does have an interesting ability on his robot mode. This can't take more than three attack damage from a single attack. So Scrapnel will hang around for at least three turns in a battle if you're lucky. So definitely somebody that's not going to be messed with. However... This thing becomes more fun on his insect mode. When you flip to this mode, you may knock out one of your fellow Insecticons. If you do, tap an enemy that has 13 or fewer stars, which means he can tap out anybody but Metroplex at the moment. So, nasty little sucker is Scrapnel there. You can expect in an Insecticon team, Scrapnel's going to be there to lead the charge. Card number 24 is Jetfire. He's an uncommon card. He has the trait of ranged in his robot mode. He retains it in his alternate mode and gains plane and costs 10 stars to recruit on your team. Jetfire has 15 hit points overall. He has 4 attack and 1 defense as a robot. Whereas on his alternate mode, he has 5 attack and 1 defense. When you flip to him in robot mode, you can put an armor or utility from your scrap pile onto this character. So, that can come in handy if he's had one that's recently been discarded or scrapped off of another character. So, bear that in mind whenever you need it. However, in his jet mode, he has Bold 1, giving you an extra battle card to draw when you're attacking. So, not too shabby. Could be better, but could be a lot worse, too. Number 25, we have Kickback, Cunning Insecticon. Kickback is an uncommon card. His traits include Insecticon and Melee, which are present on both modes. And he costs 5 stars to recruit into your army. He has 9 hit points overall. He has 0 attack and 1 defense as a robot. Whereas an insect, he has three attack and one defense. In robot mode, when he's attacking, you can flip two more battle cards for each other Insecticon you began the game with. So, definitely he's going to need the extra help with that low attack. He's going to need all the help he can get, so... Kickback better be on a team with Insecticons. Flipping him over to the other side. When this, is, when this damages an enemy, you can repair one damage from one of your Insecticons. So he functions as an Insecticon healer. And at only five stars, he's definitely going to make it into a few Insecticon teams. Card number 26 is Megatron, Decepticon Leader. He's a common card. And we're going to pause here for a moment. We'll continue this in a moment. Sorry about that, folks. I had an expected company show up. It is the holiday season, after all. So, getting back to where we was... 
We will take a look here at card number 26, Megatron, Decepticon Leader. This Megatron is the common version. His traits are Leader and Ranged in Robot Mode. He retains both of them in his alternate mode and gains Tank. Megatron, this Megatron is also worth 10 stars to your team. Megatron has 12 hit points altogether. He has a 4 attack and 2 defense in his robot mode. In alternate mode, he has 2 attack and 3 defense. Now for his robot mode, his ability is Pierce 3, do at least 3 damage when attacking, but not more than the attack modifier total. So this gives him a devastating weapon as is. Now we flip him over to the back side, and on his alt mode, when you flip to this mode, you may scrap a card from your hand. If you do, scrap an enemy upgrade, so that can be kind of nasty in unto itself, especially if your enemy has something that's going to devastate some of your attacks. Well, we're not done with Megatron, as he does have a second card. Megatron Living Weapon. This is card 27 in the series, and it is the rare version of Megatron. Like the other one, it has Leader and Ranged as his traits. He carries those over on the opposite side, along with gaining Tank. This Megatron, however, is worth 13 stars, so he is very expensive to deploy. He has 14 hit points altogether. In robot mode, he has 7 attack and 2 defense. In alternate mode, he has 5 attack and 2 defense. Now this Megatron is super powerful due to this ability on his robot mode. This can be upgraded with a weapon in his armor and or utility slots. So instead of equipping Mega this Megatron with armor or a utility, he can have three weapons in his in that place. So, sacrificing some of your defense, you may be able to equip Megatron with some very powerful weapons. And then over here on the back side, in his alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, return a weapon from your scrap pile to your hand. That can come in handy on a few of those. Especially since there is one weapon in particular, the Grenade Launcher, that after you use it, it's immediately thrown in the scrap pile. So, that's a way to get it back, or if some nasty robot took one away from you. Coming in at number 28 is the other super rare card, Nemesis Prime Dark Clone. He's card number 28, he is the second super rare in the deck. He has melee as his, spe as his trait in robot mode, which he retains in alt mode but gains truck. And Nemesis Prime costs 12 stars to recruit on your team. Nemesis Prime has 16 hit points altogether. He has a 7 attack and 2 defense in robot mode. However, in alternate mode, he retains the two defense, but has only a six attack. And this also shows that Nemesis Prime is a very powerful character that you'll build your deck around. In robot mode, his ability is, when you reshuffle your scrap pile into your deck, put the bottom card of your deck face down under this. This has plus three attack for each card under him. So, if you're going to use Nemesis Prime, he is definitely the star of your, of your team, and you will need to build a deck that will work for this. You will need to keep your hand flushing constantly into your scrap pile. So that, that way, the moment your scrap pile is filled up with all cards, you can reshuffle and gain three attack for sacrificing a card. However, you cannot look at the card you're putting underneath him. 
So you may end up inadvertently sacrificing a very good card to gain this ability, so beware when doing that. Lastly, on his alternate mode, when you flip to this mode, your opponent chooses one of their characters and does two damage to it. Not quite as impressive, but certainly a way to deal with uh, certainly a nasty edge to Nemesis Prime. Moving on now for card number 29, we have Optimus Prime Battlefield Legend. This is the rare version of Optimus Prime in the da in the booster packs, rather. His traits are leader and ranged in robot mode. He carries leader over into his alternate mode, but gains truck and melee. And this Optimus Prime costs 13 stars to recruit into your team. Optimus has 14 hit points altogether. He has an 8 attack and 2 defense in robot mode, whereas in alt mode he has a 6 attack and 3 defense. His robot mode special ability is after you flip battle cards for this character's attack and before the defense flips, you may play one of the actions you flip. That can come in handy if you end up pulling an action card while you're flipping the cards for battle. You may end up with upgrades, so it requires a little bit of luck, but hopefully you've, if you've built a deck that has this character in it, you will plan for that to make sure there's plenty of actions in there. Hopefully good ones to benefit you. On the flip side, in his alt mode, when you flip to this mode, return an action from your scrap pile to your hands. So if you have one that you used and you liked it, that's a way to get it back and have another round with it. Card number 30 is also Optimus Prime. This time it's Freedom Fighter version. This is the common version of Optimus Prime. His traits are leader and melee in robot mode. He carries those both over to the alternate mode and gains truck. This version of Optimus Prime, though, is only 12 stars to recruit, so he's slightly cheaper than the other one. This Optimus Prime has 15 hit points altogether. He has a 5 attack and 2 defense in robot mode. In alt mode, he has a 6 attack and 1 defense. Now for special abilities, in robot mode, he has bold 2, which allows him to flip 2 more battle cards when he is attacking. So that's always, always a good one. And then back here on the opposite side, he becomes a healer, as when you flip to his alternate mode, repair 1 damage from each of your Autobots. So, while the game says you can mix the Autobots and Decepticons together, if that's how you wish to build your team, this one obviously should stay with, the, with an Autobot-only team so that everybody gets the benefit of his healing. Alright, we're down to the final ten, so brace yourselves, folks. Card 31 is Prowl, Military Strategist. He is card 31. He's an uncommon card. Prowl's trait is ranged in robot mode. However, in his alternate mode, he has car and specialist, and Prowl costs 6 stars to recruit on your team. Prowl has 9 hit points altogether. He has a 4 attack and 2 defense in robot mode. Whereas in alternate mode, he has a 3 attack and 2 defense. His special ability in robot mode is when one of your cars is KO'd, repair 3 damage from one of your other characters. So that can be quite useful if he's on a team with a bunch of cars. However, on the flip side... When you flip to his alternate mode, each of your cars gets bold 2 until the end of the turn, 
gaining the ability to flip two more cards when attacking. So Prowl here is definitely a very useful, very useful card for a card deck. And next up we have Ramjet Sky Smasher. Ramjet is card 32. He is a common card. His trait in robot mode is ranged. However, in his alternate mode, he has plane and melee, and he costs 10 stars to deploy on your team. Ramjet has 14 hit points altogether. In his robot mode, he has 4 attack and 2 defense, whereas in the alt mode, he has 7 attack and 0 defense defense and as you've seen he has no special abilities whatsoever basically he's a helper for any plane team but then again at 10 stars and no bonus abilities whatsoever Ramjet is likely going to sit on the sidelines for a few of these. Or at least unless you get some better jets to come along. <sighs> Next up at 33 is Ransack Insecticon Commando. He's an uncommon card. He has, as robot mode, his abilities, traits, rather, are Insecticon and Ranged. Whereas in the alternate mode, he still has Insecticon, but becomes Melee instead. And Ransack costs six stars to deploy on your team. <clears throat> he has eight hit points altogether. His attack is a special tied to his special ability. And his defense is 3 in robot mode. Whereas in his alternate mode, he has 3 attack and 2 defense. Alright, now as we said a moment ago, his attack is tied to his special ability in robot mode. This character's attack is equal to the number of damage counters on him. So... He can get quite nasty the more he is damaged, so avoid healing Ransack for as long as possible. Whereas on the back side, when you flip to his insect mode, move two damage counters from another character to this one. So this is an easy way to bolster him up by having him take the damage from somebody else. However, you need to be cautious of that, because obviously when the enemy learns he's getting stronger, the more he gets hit, somebody might take him out. <clears throat> Next up at 34 is Sergeant Cop, Veteran Sergeant. He's a common card. He has uh, the trait of ranged in robot mode which he retains in his alternate mode and gains truck, and he is worth seven stars to bring on your team. Cup has eight hit points altogether. He has a five attack and one defense as a robot, whereas in his alternate mode he has three for both attack and defense, and as you can see, he also does not contribute anything to the team whatsoever. About the only thing he has going for him is the low point cost means he can probably be worked in to a truck deck where he might be able to do some good but right now as it stands not really. Since the only other trucks are basically Hound and Optimus Prime, and they bring a lot more to the table than what Cup does. So, right now, I don't think Cup's going to be much use. Maybe in a future deck. Maybe in a future expansion, rather. Next up at 35, we have Skywarp, 
sneaky prankster. Skywarp is an uncommon card. He has the range trait in robot mode. He retains that in his alternate mode and gains plane. And he also has a six star point cost. Skywarp has eight hit points altogether. He has four attack and two defense in both robot and alternate modes. For his robot mode, his special ability is when this defends and you flip at least one white icon, you may choose one of your other characters. If you do, damage from this attack is done to that character instead. So be aware of pulling those because you might be pulling any with white star with them white icons because Skywarp may hurt one of his buddies instead. However, when you flip him to the jet mode, when you flip to this mode, each player reveals the top card of their deck. Again, not especially that useful, but it might give you some idea as to what's coming up next. Coming in at number 36, we have Starscream Air Commander. This Starscream is uncommon. He has the traits of leader and ranged in robot mode. He retains those in his alternate mode and gains plane. And Starscream costs 11 stars to bring on your team. Starscream has 13 hit points altogether. He has a 4 attack and 2 defense in robot mode. In his airplane mode, he has 3 attack and 1 defense. On his robot mode, he has Bold 2 as his special ability, so that's always a good one, getting extra battle cards when attacking. Helps increase the odds of a hit. And on the opposite side, when you flip to his jet mode, do damage to an enemy equal to the number of other planes you have. So, this is obviously one that you'll want to build a plane deck around. But you'll have to be leery of it since Starscream here will take up almost half of your team. But then again, if he wasn't tricky, he wouldn't be Starscream, wouldn't he? Of course, speaking of Starscream, here he is again with a second card. This is Starscream Scheming Second in Command. This is the common card. He has leader and ranged in his robot mode for traits and on the back side he gains plane and keeps those two and this one only costs 10 stars to bring onto your team this star scream has 14 hit points he has a five attack and one defense in both modes and has some pretty useful skills down here in his robot mode, he has tough one, so you get an extra card when you're defending. And when you flip to his airplane mode, he goes to bold one, allowing for an extra card to be drawn when attacking. So this one's somewhat more useful. I could see this one being played with a lot more than the other one, but that's just my opinion. Coming in at number 38 is Sunstorm, Fusion Flyer. Sunstorm is a rare card. He has ranged as his trait in robot mode. He retains it in his alternate mode and gains plane. And Sunstorm is 11 stars to recruit on your team. Sunstorm has 14 hit points altogether. He has a special... A type for his attack and one defense whereas he has three attack and three defense in his alternate mode now the special for his attack in robot mode goes as follows this character's attack is equal to the number of cards you have in hand so pretty much you're gonna be a card hoarder to boost his attack not necessarily 
the best way to do this. Hold on a second here. Adjust the camera. That's better. Not necessarily a great thing to be a card hoarder at times, but sometimes it's a good thing. Here on the back side, when you flip to this mode and you have fewer than three cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference. So, again, that can give you some help in boosting your hand, but not necessarily something that's going to be used a whole lot. Coming in at number 39 is Thundercracker Mock Warrior. Thundercracker is an uncommon card. He has ranged as his trait in robot mode. He retains it in his alternate mode and gains plane. And Thundercracker costs 8 stars to put on your team. Thundercracker has 12 hit points altogether. He has 5 attack and 1 defense in robot mode. In plane mode, he has 4 attack and 1 defense. For his special ability in robot mode, when you play an action, he gets plus 1 attack until the end of the turn. Which is, that can come in handy depending on what you're able to play at that time as an action. However, here on the opposite side, when you flip to his plane mode, you can do 2 damage to an enemy that has melee. Again, probably not especially useful, but if you're lucky enough to have a melee opponent, that will come in handy. Here we are, folks. Last card. Card number 40, Wheeljack, Weapons Inventor. Wheeljack is an uncommon card. His trait in robot mode is melee. However, in his alternate mode, he has car and specialist, and Wheeljack costs 9 stars to recruit on your team. Wheeljack has 13 hit points altogether. He has a 5 attack and 1 defense in robot mode. However, in car mode, he has 4 attack and 2 defense. Wheeljack's special ability in robot mode is, while you have a weapon in your scrap pile, he has bold three. So he gets to flip three battle cards when he's attacking, so that can be somewhat useful. Equip him, with, equip him or one of his buddies with a grenade launcher, and there you go. After one shot, he gets bold three. On the flip side, when... You upgrade one of your cars, while Wheeljack's in car mode, you can draw a card and then scrap a card from your hand. Again, you can use that to scrap a weapon and bolster up this side of him. That's a thought, at least. Well, my friends, we've done it. That is all 46 of the Transformer cards available in the game. So, quite an impressive feat to look at. As far as I'm aware of, nobody else has done this. Judging by how long it's taken this video to get done, I can probably see why. But, if any of you out there liked it, then it was worth the effort. This concludes the part one of the Transformer card game review, where we have reviewed the Transformers. If you like the video, please leave me a thumbs up here on YouTube. I certainly deserve it for all this effort. Don't forget as well, new viewers, hit that subscribe button down below so you can join up in our ranks, and ring the bell so you'll be notified of new videos. Please also share your thoughts about this review in the comments down below. This is Sparkster1701. Now remember, next Friday will be our usual Transformer review, and hopefully on Saturday or Sunday we'll post the next part for the card game. So until then, I'll catch you all later.